look at this card isn't it beautiful this is today's mate we're going to do the ombre on the background we're going to do the embossing i'm going to show you how to make the frame how to adapt different frames um yeah and i think you're going to love this i love the sparkle really sparkles i hope you like this i think we should just get straight on and see how it's made i thought i'd do a quick little christmas card well, it's actually not little it's going to come out quite big but quite nice and flat-ish. Um, but I thought I would use my snowflakes. So this is a frame from Crafter's Companion, which I've lost the packet for. There we go. It is Sparkling Snowflakes Flakes frame. And I thought I'd make that the focal point. But what I wanted to do was I wanted to do some embossing on here. I wanted to emboss this. But I also wanted to create like a white frame around it. So as you'll see on here, what I have done is I've put my die on here in the centre and I've just done a little pencil mark, very light pencil mark up on the inside of the frame. Can you see? Can you see it there? Hopefully you can see um, to show where I want it to go. And then I'm just going to get some masking tape and put that just inside that frame line. So just fractionally in. So this is my, I think, Karen, what's this called? Alter New... Um, it's like a masking silk or silk tape. I love it. It's really, really gentle. I am just touching it onto my trousers as I pull a piece off. I've got a pair of leggings on, so I'm just popping it onto to there to um, just take off any extra stick. My cardstock is just multi-purpose white card and it's about a 300 GSM, maybe a little bit more. So it should be nice and easy. Good. So you can see I'm not ramming it on. I'm just sort of lightly placing it on. So I'm just going to put it onto a craft mat and hold that down. I've got my sticky stuff eraser because I find that is the best rubber that you can get, a razor that you can get. And I'm just going to rub out those pencil lines because that will be white. So I don't want it to show. So there we go. So I've now got um, it marked off. So that is just, look, if I put this back on now, you can see that perfect. When I put that on, look, the tape is just on that inside line, but it's not on the inside there. So that is brilliant. I'm going to bring in three ink pads. We'll move that over to one side. I've got Ocean Blue. That's my middle one. I've got Midnight. That's my darkest. And I've got Baby Blue, which is my palest. And I've got three applicators. I've got a couple of blending brushes just there. And a nice little blending brush here so i'm going to start with this let's move those out of the way i'm going to start with this one i'm going to start with baby blue so let's just put a bit on my mat nice and pale but that's what we want pick it up and then i'm just going to blend it over here so the baby blue is a bit harder to see you can't see it as easily but it, it, i can see it's going down let's get a little bit more ink there we go and then we can put this onto here i might have to come back in with the ink so all i'm doing is inking it up but i'm getting that lovely border around the edge now if you haven't got masking tape or you don't enjoy doing that then just do the whole sheet it's going to look lovely but what i wanted was a nice white border so can you see i've got a bit of baby blue on there just need a bit more down there it's not even okay so that's my first color my second color is going to be ocean blue and let's pop that onto the mat as well and then I can pick up some ink off that. These are just some blending brushes. Um, I've had quite a long time. Oh, it's not picking, that's not showing very well. We might have to do that for a few times. So yeah, we're gonna have to see if I can pick up a bit more on my straight to my brush. I did this in practice and it blended a bit Ah, oh, There you go, it's coming on now. Coming on now, there we go. You can see my what would I say? Ocean blue. Let's just blend out the baby blue into that. I don't want to see a line. Just blending it out. There we go. It's really weird when you do things like this. It's often hard to see them until you finish. I'm just putting that on there so I know which applicator it was. Oops. And then I've got my um, midnight. Let's put a little bit on here again. Look at that. That's much, much stronger pick that up and then you'll notice I will start on the masking tape 
and work my way across. Oh, I can see that's that's a different sort of blue. It's much, much stronger. And then we're going to blend that. Let's pick up a bit more. There we go. Can you see that blending out? There I'm going to just pick up a bit on my brush. I'm going to try and get it quite dark down at the bottom and work my way up. The more contrast you have between the three colours, although you want it to be quite neat, the more contrast, the better it's going to look. I'm going to just come down here, just take that one. There we go, look at that. Just go over that one backwards and forwards, just where that colours join in. And then I might just get the baby blue one and just, I want it to be a definite colour change. There we go. That's going to look amazing. We're going to be embossing this, so you don't need to worry about that. OK, just bear with me. Let's get that rid of that. And then I just need to very carefully remove the masking tape. As I always say, do it at an angle like that. Can you see? Well, it just caught a little bit. But the good thing is we're about to emboss. So if it does catch just... Oh, this one's caught. Oh, why did it catch like that? I hardly pressed. Hardly pressed. Never mind. Nice angle. There we go. Peel that back. Oh, it's catching. And the final one. I love that crisp line that you get. It looks, it's so satisfying to reveal, isn't it? And then that's coming off there. Now look at that. Now that definitely looking sort of snowflakey um, vibes to it, isn't it? So I found myself a snowflake embossing folder. It's a really old tattered lace one, but I'm sure you've got some. Um, yeah, all the way. So it's big snowflakes at the bottom when I put this down. So I'm making sure I've got it the right way round. Yes, because when I did my practice one, I ended up embossing the wrong way round. So I just want to make sure I've got it right to the top. And you'll see that's going to emboss right to the top. And then it's going to emboss, look at that, right to the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to run that through my die cutting machine. Really easy to do. Um, cutting plate, cutting plate, that's all I need. Let me get do that. Okay, so let's have a look at what we've got on here. We've got our embossing folder. And when I reveal, oh yes, look at that. That effect is amazing. I think it's better to do it this way round, put the colour on first and then emboss. Doesn't that look fantastic? I love this. Love this crisp border um, to have that. Now, if you wanted just that panel um, embossed and you wanted a flat white border, I would suggest you do that separately and stick it on. That's the other way around to do it. And especially if you're going to put a frame over, you wouldn't see. So if you don't want the emboss around there, do that as a separate panel. Leave this plain white and then stick it on top. Lots of different ways to do that. OK, so as I showed you, I've got my frame. I've got my frame here with the snowflakes. And that's going to fit. Well, it will go on that way around, won't it? But you can see lovely there. So all I need to do is run that through my die cutting machine. Right, now, because this was a detailed frame, I've took out my metal magnetic shim and I put in my metal cutting plate. And that gives me the perfect detail on the back. I just think it sometimes with dies like this, you just need the extra little bit. So I just tend to hold, give it a hand to lift these out. Just like that, it's all cut, but it's so delicate. And there you go. Now, gorgeous frame. You can use that for whatever you want. Then, with my pokey tool, I'm just going to work my way around all the way and just gently lift that off. It's off better to lift the cardstock from the die than the die from the cardstock. You're less likely to rip it. So then, I just need to. Oh, that's a piece. There we go. And you can see on there, it's got a piece of tape on, so it's not coming off. There we go. And you can see you've got a nice piece of card to be able to use elsewhere. Just need to pokey all the bits out. 
Okay, so I've just poked all the bits out from there. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to bring my um, mat back in and I'm just going to add a little bit of extra detail onto these snowflakes. So I'm going to get some masking tape, just some cheaper masking tape. Again, it's another one of these ones that's a bit like um, a silk tape. And I'm just going to cut myself four little pieces to just like this. And I'm going to just use these to protect the frame. There we go, I've got four nice pieces there. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop these just on there, where the snowflakes meet the frame. One, and you'll see why in a minute. Two, don't worry if it's going over a little bit of the snowflake, I can sort that in one minute. And then another one just there. And then another one. I did this first and it just looked a little bit plain. So I thought, oh, I know it needed a little bit of glitter. And this was a really easy way to do it. So all I would do then, get rid of those bits, is I would just make sure that it's not over any of the snowflake design. So just cut it just like that. I can always tip that one over the top. Just lift that one over the top there, and if need be, that one out. There we go. Right. So I've got my snowflake, and this is you know these blending tools. This is just a blending tool pad, and all I'm going to do is get my tacky glue, and I'm going to put a bit of tacky glue. Come on, come out in the centre of each snowflake, and then I'm going to get my blending pad, and I'm just going to go all over that snowflake. I'm sure there are specific applicators to do this, but I found this one works really, really well. There we go. And I bet you've got loads of these lying around. A little piece of sponge. You can get really cheap sponge. I've actually got some really cheap bath sponges, baby bath sponges. Could have cut one of those up. Or even one of those, um, you know, those green scoury sponges? If they, I just, what did I buy? Six of those for work for 39p from one of these discount stores. So yeah, get one of those and just cut a little piece of one of those off. That would work really well. I'll have to get a pack from a craft room, won't I? Because it works really well for applying your glue just like this. Don't worry about that. I'm not worried about that. It's just going nice and tacky on that side. It's nice and thin. I'm getting the thinnest layer of glue all over here. And I know it's going all over. So it's the easiest way. There we go. Let's wipe that off. And then all I want to do then is bring in some glitter. Nice big tub of glitter that I've got. And all I'm going to do, I'll do it this way. Put that over there and then I'll just sprinkle on a little bit of glitter or a lot of glitter. And then I'll bring that one in and then I'll sprinkle the glitter back into the pot. Actually, I've got a really nice little glitter tray i don't know why i didn't use that didn't think to use that there we go and that's i think because this glitter is I've got so much it just never goes away never goes oh I've, I've gone blue and then all i need to do is pull that off and it's good to do it quite quickly in case it's got any glue on it because you don't want um it to stick and i can hear elsie pit pattering behind me she's just coming from her walk with my hubby um, he's trying to take her for a walk before it gets dark because she doesn't like fireworks and the fireworks have started round by us. So if you hear a noise, it's just Elsie pitter patting around. Right, doesn't that look beautiful? I love that. Just elevates it. Now, if you wanted, you could cut it out completely out of glitter card and you can cut it out of glitter card. This is um, a bluey silver glitter card. It is possible. You will need your metal cutting shim, um, but you can do it like that. So I've cut it out of the white. And I've also cut it out of this. This is just um, what's it called? Royal Blue. It's from my Lime Tree Crafts. And I've put that onto there. And I'm going to just do a nice little drop shadow on there. So let's bring in the mat again. Don't know why I put it away. And I'm going to get my precision glue gun because that's the best one to do. And I'm going to do it on the front side of this. I'm just going to put a few bits all over, just gently tapping. The precision glue gun not doing too much at all just 
few little bits down there, making sure it goes down the centre. All the way over. You can see just adding a few bits. Now, I always tend personally to drop shadow off to the left. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to use this sponge a little bit just to even that out which defeats the point of the precision glue gun i know but it will still work and i've actually got one of these it's dry this one's nice and dry so it'll be easier to handle and then i'm just going to pop that on with a little bit of a drop shadow now if i've drop shadow there it shouldn't it should drop shadow on the inside there and then it should Drop shadow, that's it. If I've gone up, it should do it that way. That's the right way. Why is that not looking like it's not even? There we go. We're just going to make that little. I think for drop shadow, less is definitely more. It looks so much nicer with just the smallest one. Now, that's not in the right place, is it? Let's get that in a better placing. There we go. That drop shadow is better than that one but there we go it looks okay now i haven't quite decided do i want to do a second drop shadow do i want to do that drop shadow more on the in the other way or does it not need it i don't think it needs it i think it looks nice like that so what we're going to do is we're going to bring back this that we've got here and then we're going to pop that over the top and I think that looks really, really nice, really simple. But before I stick that down, I'm just going to bring in my card base, which is very, very simple. I've got a 10 by 7 card base and trimmed it down. And then I've just taken some silver, which I just then use my trimmer to trim it out, just leaving three quarters of an inch all the way around. And that's going to go onto my card base like that now i've only gone this big card because of the frame what you could actually do with this frame and i'll show you on this one it just came to me if you don't want a rectangle say you want a square then all you need to do not have masking tape on there what you need to do is i'm going to do it there and there then you need to make sure you cut the same amount off so i'm going to pop that onto here no, that's not right. How do I do it that way? If I do it that way around, like that, that's better. Were you all shouting at me? I was doing it the wrong way. Put those two together. Then if I cut it, let's for example like that. And then I can paste it back together. Put that one and that one like that. And I've got a small square. There we go. Doesn't that look lovely? So you could do that. You could still do your drop shadow and you can make your card a lot smaller. So my card is big because I've kept my full frame. If you're feeling that's a bit too big, drop it down to six by six and just cut down your frame. I do like that. That does look absolutely gorgeous. Isn't it? And once that's stuck down, you wouldn't see that join. Always put a gem on if you're not sure. But yeah, doesn't that look lovely? Lots and lots of options. Okay, so silver and then the blue. So let's put that onto the card base. This set. Uh, Tacky. I've got another tacky. Why am I using a really nearly run out tacky glue and I've got lots of others? It might be something I need to get when I go. Oh, I've got all my uh, sticks too. Tap around PVA glue. I might move on to that one in a minute or soon. Yes, I've got that one. That would be good. It's just it's in a big bottle, so I tend not to pick it up because it's a bit heavy. Right, so put that onto here. If you're at all unsure, just make, just make sure there's no glue showing. You can always go around. Oops, that wasn't my, my, I thought it was my stamping tool. Look at this, I've got blue on here. Let's get rid of that. Otherwise, it's going to go on my card. There we go, that's going to go on there. And then I'm going to stick this one on. Right, change your glue. Sticks to PVA. It's a nice big bottle. Might decant it into something a little bit smaller, but it's going to work really, really well. And that's going to go on here. Now, I've got my card that way. I personally want the darker at the bottom 
and the lighter at the top. But you do it whichever way you want. And it doesn't have to be three shades of one colour. You could be doing red, gold and green or whatever, whatever your Christmas colour it is. OK, so the next thing I'm going to do, again, my sticks to, I'm going to get my sticks to roll and I'm just going to stick it on the back of here so that it's just slightly raised so I can come from here. And that's the great thing about doing the drop shadow as well, is it makes the frame a little bit wider and easier to um, apply your adhesive to. Come on to here. Nope, I've not gone off the edge. We can go on there, right to the, go as far as I can. I'll probably cut off a little bit too much here. And then just down here as well. So that's not going to hold as well as I'd hoped. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut a little piece behind there and match it up on that one. Little piece behind there. And what I might do then is get my... 3D glue and then put a little bit on there, a little bit on there, can you see? And on there, and on there. So hopefully that won't show. Move that out of the way. And then we can take the back of here. I love this snowflake design. It really does work, doesn't it? Drop all those bits straight in the bin. I know I've got that one to come back to. There we go. And that one, taking that off. As you've seen, sometimes you can be putting your um, glue on the back, but hopefully I can do this nicely. And all I'm going to do is just surround that on there. And I'm loving, that looks amazing. So what I then did was, Back one of my old signature collections, I had this Merry Christmas um, die. And I don't know where it was. It was on my desk a few minutes ago and it's just gone. Uh, oh, it's here, look, right in front of me. Merry Christmas. It was from one of my signature collections, but I'm sure you can find plenty like that. I'm just going to stick that on. And for me, I am naturally a lazy crafter. Now, I know a lot of people would do this with foam pads, but I find that takes far far too long so I'm just going to do it with my 3D glue all the way along the great thing is is it levels itself out so it'll find its own level there we go and then I thought about putting it like that but then I'm just going to put it just slightly at an angle I'll hold like that. And then to finish it off, I've got a few gems. So I'm going to pop a couple of these nice blue gems onto here. I'll do the bigger ones. Right, that's clear. And that one's lost its stick. So what I need to do, precision glue press. Let's put a little bit of glue. Plus I've got glitter, haven't I? I've got glitter. So it needs that extra bit of help glue would come off that one so let's put I think if I remember rightly these are hunky dory ones I remember our lovely Pauline gave them to me one time when I was doing some shows at the same time as her and I was saying I needed more gems she gave me these so we can then just pop one two three four and then I'm going to go smaller gems not the smallest, but a little bit smaller. Why am I not using the ones that I find so much easier for gems? It's stuck to me now. Look at my hands. Navy blue ink is not good. Right, I need to lift this snowflake up in a minute. It's gone a little bit flat, but we can do that at the end. Maybe that's a tip. If you're doing this, put your gems on before you put it on the card. I always think to do gems at the end. And then, it does confuse me when I've gone from squeezy tweezers to regular tweezers. I forget whether I'm supposed to be squeezing or releasing or doing one. And, oh, I 
final one. Actually, I want a large one on that because it's a large snowflake. I want a large one. That just needs that glue. So I'm going to take that one back off there. Put it back on the mat. Let's get a larger one. Put it on there. That's better. That's much better. And then a couple of gems just on some of these snowflakes just to make it look pretty. Just like that. And that will be perfect. I think that's it. I think that is it. So again, a very, oh, I was going to lift this up. Let's lift this up before I forget. The glue had just got a bit flattened. I can see where it should be. There, much better. And the great thing is by putting those gems on, you hide the glue. So there you go. That is my framed ombre um, and embossed Christmas card. What do you think? Do you like that? Hopefully nice and quick and you have enjoyed watching me make that. You could do this any colours. The frame could be plain. It could be for birthdays. It could be for anniversary. There are lots of frames around. If you've not got a frame with decorative corners, then just cut a frame out using two of your nesting dies and then just put maybe a flower or something in the corner. Or as I showed you, trim down your frames and make them much smaller if that works for you. So that is another way I might have to do that. There you go. I hope you like that. That really worked by putting that Merry Christmas on at an angle, didn't it? Oh, there we are. Well, hope you enjoyed that. Keep getting lots of Christmas ideas, so I shall keep making them whatever I can remember. And I hope you are enjoying them. So please, please don't forget to click on all the links. And I'm loving your comments. I'm having some absolutely fantastic feedback on my videos, and I really do appreciate it. And I try to read every comment. Sometimes they come through a bit late, but as soon as I see there is a comment on my YouTube channel um, about my videos, I will always comment back. So thank you for your time. I'm going to put another click link to my subscribe because I don't want any of you to miss out. And until the next time, happy crafting, my friends. Take care and I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now.